morning. Our call to worship is from Psalm 148. Will you stand and we'll sing it together. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon, praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Let them praise. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of all the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted his majesty above earth and heaven.
Please be seated. Let's, let's pray together. Lord, we pause and we give you thanks that you have gathered us here in your name, that we can sing your praises, that we can be reminded of who you are and your goodness. And as we gather on this Christmas morning, we are especially mindful of the promises of Christ, the wonder of the promise that um, the light has come into the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. We thank you for this promise that we can hold dear, that even in the midst of our own challenges and struggles, even as we see many things around us that are broken, that hurt us, that we wish were different, we thank you that you are the light of the world who has entered your world, and no matter the darkness, it's not greater than your light. And so we give you thanks, and we pause into the wonder of our God who not only made us, but enter into creation to seek us and to find us in love. We thank you, Lord, that you came, and when you came, you came in humility to find us at our lowest points, to find all of us, that we may be lifted up by your grace. We give you thanks for the good news of Christ, that it's not that we loved you, Lord, but that you loved us and sought us. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as part of our worship time, we'll have a time of confession and assurance. You'll see in your order that we can uh, do this together in prayer and song, and then we'll have a time of, of personal prayer. So I invite you to join together in this uh, prayer of confession. Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. Whoever loves is a child of God and knows God. Here is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Lord God, if you so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Let us not just talk about love. Let us put our love into action. Let us not close our hearts against our brothers and sisters, but let us love in deed and in truth. Let's take a moment of quiet for our own personal prayer to bring our needs to God.
Lord, we thank you that you hear us when we pray. And we thank you for the promise in Christ that your grace is greater than our sin. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I invite you to stand with me that we can say together these words of assurance that come from Isaiah 9. Let's join together. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Well, as Christ has welcomed us, let's welcome each other and wish each other Merry Christmas in Christ's name. Jesus the Christ is born, give thanks to everyone, rejoice ye great ones and ye small, God's will it has been done. Jesus the Christ is born, give thanks to is born. Give thanks to everyone. Rejoice ye great ones and ye small gods. Will it has been done. Please be seated. morning. The Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah 62 verses 6 through 12. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have set watchmen all day and all the night. They shall never be silent. You who put the Lord in remembrance take no rest 
and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a praise in the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink your wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up a signal over the peoples. Behold, the Lord is proclaimed to the end of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation comes, behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you should be called sought out, a city not forsaken. The gospel lesson is from Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. This is the word of the Lord. Well, Merry Christmas again. It's good to be here uh, with you, a chance to worship, and Look at God's word, and uh, we're going to look at a passage from the opening uh, chapter of Hebrews. In, in just a moment, I'll read that. Um, but maybe just as a start, we can reflect on even what we heard Gina read, just this reminder of the Christmas story that maybe is familiar to many of us. Joseph, set in motion by uh, a royal census, to, goes to Bethlehem. For he and Mary, it's about a a hundred mile trip that would have taken them maybe eight days to to journey. For safety, Joseph and Mary would have traveled with in a caravan of other travelers. And they arrive in Bethlehem, they put their name on the list and why they were there. Before they could get back home, the time came for the child to be born. Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a boy. And their long journey and their displacement, their lack of resources left them scrambling for provision and for shelter. We can imagine they cut or given large strips of cloth that Mary could wrap her newborn son in. And then she placed him in a manger, the animal trough made into a baby's bed because there was no guest rooms available to them. And I tell that story again as we begin, because we gather here this day in witness to the proclamation that this child resting in a manger, this child born to Mary when she was some hundred miles from her home, uh, this child dependent upon his parents for everything, 
this child is the Son of God, the one through whom and for whom all things have been made. And as the poet Joan Ray Mills writes, now newborn in wide-eyed wonder, he gazes up at his own creation. His hands that hurled the world now hold tight his mother's finger. I tell that story even if we're familiar because it invites us to think of the wonder of what the Christian faith proclaims. God taking on flesh to be with us. And so we can have that in mind that we can reflect on the wonder of incarnation of God becoming flesh as we look at these opening verses from Hebrews. For they tell of God speaking and speaking especially in his son. You can look here in your order or just listen as I read or follow in your Bible. But this is Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God, and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Well, as we reflect on the incarnation and this wonder of who Christ is, this morning we're, we're just going to talk briefly, but I want us to to see two observations, two observations. The first, that we can notice that God speaks. That we notice that God speaks. Long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, but now God has spoken to us through his Son. What does it mean to speak? This is, you know, we can think of sending an email, a text, a phone call, Maybe during this time of the year of Christmas, we can think of special Christmas notes or even Christmas cards that one might send or receive. Why do we speak? Why does someone speak to us? To be, to be known. To communicate. To speak is a desire to be known, to seek connection. To speak often means to express a care for another to share one's self or to seek a mutual sharing. And I think that we should think about that in terms of our God as well. That when God speaks, it is a gift to us. In God speaking in this gift, we find fellowship with God. We learn what is good and what is true and who we are and how to live. And just like we hear in 1 John that God first loved us, we're reminded that God also takes the initiative, that God speaks to us, that we in turn they speak to him. That God speaks to us to establish the connection that we were made to have with God. And it's a chance for us to think about the Bible and the, the precious nature of God's word that he's given to us. And as we study it on our own or even as we gather in settings like this, it's reminds us that it's, it's not just to find an interesting tidbit or some kind of fascinating you know, trivia, Bible trivia, it's all, it's all great if you like Bible trivia, but it's not just that we can find interesting nuggets. The scriptures are given to us by God that we would be in fellowship with God. Again, the thinking of the wonder of the incarnation invites us to this idea that the God who made all things speaks to you and to me, desires fellowship with us through his word. And this speaking of God, it's a special thing to remind us that we are not alone. That we don't live in a universe that's simply dark or quiet. It reminds us that we were made for connection, made to know and be known, to experience the wonder and joy and worship of God. So the first thing we can notice is that God speaks. And the second observation that I want us to see from these verses 
is that God speaks in a special way through his son. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, but now God has spoken to us in his son. In order for us to grasp the, the greatness of this, the significance of this, the significance of the person, the son, we see the rest of these verses give kind of a description of, of who this son is. This baby born to Mary is the heir of all things. All things seen and unseen are given to him. The son is to inherit what he himself participated in bringing into being. This child announced by the angels to the shepherds is the radiance, the shining display of the glory of God. Meaning the exact imprint, which means that when we look at Jesus, we see the nature of what God is like, of who God is. And this child upholds the universe by the word of his power. The son is the one in whom all things were made and one in which all things hold together. These are majestic claims about this little child. This language is not unique to these verses. It runs throughout the New Testament the one through whom all things exist, the word that was in the beginning, the eternal word that took on flesh, that all things were made through, the image of the unseen God. This series of descriptions overwhelmingly asserts the special nature of the son, the child born in Bethlehem. And as I've said, and as we have kind of been pondering during the season of Advent, have been, especially today, that this is the wonder and scandal of Christianity. Jesus, the newborn, swaddled in Mary's arms, is God with us. The wonder of the idea that God speaking leads to God's word taking on flesh to be with us. We see the, the full understanding that God speaks to dwell with us in fellowship. And God speaking and, and God speaking in his son in a special way, we see God's identification with us and his steadfast love, even in the midst of our choosing to ignore or not listen. And I want us to, to sense this kind of earthly body nature, this intimate presence. The son's participation in humanity is not just this general concept, but it is specific. He takes place, he dwells in a, a single person, Jesus of Nazareth, who belongs to a specific family of humans, reminding us that Jesus fully participates in our humanity. As Hebrews will say later in chapter 2, he is like us in every sense, in every respect. And this reminds us again, why does God speak and why did Jesus come purpose of these things is for fellowship with those he's going to redeem. The purpose of him coming in humility as a baby is to come and to reach every place to lift up those who have fallen and to bind up the brokenhearted. You see, that is the reason for God speaking and God taking on flesh with his word. He's not just coming in general for the world. But he came for you, and he came for me. This is the promise and the wonder of Christmas. Our God did not stay off in the distance, but because of his great love for us, entered into his creation, that we would know him and dwell with him. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the wonder of your word and the promise and good news of the incarnation, that you did not forsake us but, and leave us in our sin and misery but drew near to us, speaking your true word and coming and dwelling with us in the flesh. We pray, Lord, that encountering you that we may be lifted up, our heads lifted, that we may know forgiveness and rest in Christ and new life. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.
Almighty God, who has poured upon us the light of your incarnate word, grant that the same light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The tender mercy of our God has come down from on high, giving be seated. We're having heard God's word. We're now invited to the table that God sets for his people. Part of the, the wonders of the, the, the book of Hebrews is that in chapter one, we hear this, uh, that Jesus is the one who brought forth creation, the exact imprint of the glory of God. And then in the next chapter, he, we're told he's like us in every way. The wonder of the incarnation, we see this displayed here at the table that our God took on flesh, and by his broken body and shed blood, we are redeemed. Not only do we see the wonder of the incarnation, we see its purpose, that he would form a new family of redeemed sinners, that God would do what only God can do through Christ, is justify the ungodly, that we who are far off are now seated at the table with God, called sons and daughters. This is the good news. This is the good news that God has come to make you part of his family. If you know of this faith, if you have faith in Christ and you know of your need for him, then, then come and eat and drink of this table. If you're not a follower of Christ, let this table be a witness and an invitation to you to tell you the good news. That we're not alone, but that God has acted for us. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this bread and cup. And as we gather here on this Christmas morning, we thank you for the, just the, the joy of the incarnation, that in love that you did not leave us, but you drew near, not just with spoken words, but word and flesh, to redeem us and to atone for our sins, that we would be restored to you forever. We give you thanks for the sacrament and how it is a pointer to this good news, and we pray that you would use it by your spirit to nourish us and strengthen us, to help us to walk in faith and newness of life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, on the night that he was betrayed, after giving thanks, Jesus took the bread and he broke it, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. I invite you to come down the center aisle and receive the bread and cup, and you can go back on the sides. I ask if you're able that you would hold the elements until everyone's been served, that we can eat and drink as one family. If you're not taking communion uh, today, we're, we're glad that you're here. We, you can, we're still invite you to come forward. Just put your arm across your chest, and, and uh, Rob or I can offer a prayer blessing for you here at the table. Let us come now and receive God's gifts for us.
Christ's body was broken to make us whole. Let us eat in faith. Christ's blood was shed to cover all of our sins. Let us drink in faith. In response to this table of grace, let us stand together that we can pray and sing as God's people. O oh Lord Emmanuel, you are the light of the world. You have promised that all who follow you shall not walk in darkness but we'll have the light of life. Give us courage to share this light with others as we sing together. We're going to continue worshiping through a time of, of giving our gifts to God and to the work of his church. And so I invite the, the greeters to come forward. Uh, they have a, a gray basket for your offering. I mean, for, sorry, for your, for your communion cups and the silver plate for your offering. Uh, you can also give your note through here through the church website or by text as well. Um, also, I just want to mention that after the service, uh, there'll be some coffee and some, uh, some cookies in the back. They're at the back table there. So I encourage you to stay after, have a chance to, to talk with one another after the service. Um, so let us now, in response to God's generosity, give gifts to him. Stand and join us for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy 
Receive now God's blessing. May Jesus, the light of the world, shine his light upon you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. You may go in peace.